Keats Cash Plays is back, bigger than ever. Let's get this going. Trust the Profits is proud to be sponsored by Game of Silks. Go to silks.io to get in the game. Real ownership, real races, real rewards. What's up, horse racing fans? And welcome back to Keats Cash Plays, where we look for value play horses, hopefully at double-digit odds come post-time. And my name is Keith, and you can find me at the handle each every stride on X Twitter. This week's episode features Keeneland Racecourse, as they have uh, some great stakes racing, including the Grade Three Ben Ali for a purse of three hundred thousand dollars, and also the Visit Lex Elkhorn, which is a Grade Two for a three hundred and fifty k purse. So we have a you know, a lot of purse money on the line. We also, of course, got the a uh, lot of well-known connections. Now, we do have the three-year-old prep season for the Kentucky Derby has winded down. But we're still going to be looking for those value play, price play potentials to really spice up the exactas and try payouts. And I'm going to be looking at three of those value play horses. But I did not come alone. I have a guest this week that knows a thing or two about Kentucky racing. He also, you know, he knows the circuit very well. He knows how to read the conditions precisely of a race to really find those value play horses. I'd like to welcome back to the show, Riders Up Tim. How you doing today, Tim? And welcome back to Keith's Cash Plays today. Awesome. Thanks for having me back, Keith. Really an honor. I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks since we were live on the track at Keeneland. And uh, I said, you know what? Let's go back to Keeneland with Keith, even if it's virtually this time. That's right. I had the pleasure of meeting Tim uh, just a while back here at uh, Keeneland for the Bluegrass Weekend. It was such a fun time. Great meeting you and and everybody uh, from Horse Racing Twitter. Uh, just so nice to meet you in person. Uh, I know it's fun to make this content over you know over the Zoom, for example, but great to meet you in person. Absolutely, had a great time very fun yeah it was just fun it was just the atmosphere it really lived up to the hype for me i was my first time at keelan so i really enjoyed my time there and uh, it's just great racing experience the, the paddock was so beautiful and and the weather actually really cleared up uh even better than expected it did friday was uh a little bit chilly, a little on the chilly side, but we got a gorgeous day Saturday for racing. Uh, the sun was out. I think all of us got a little bit of a sunburn. The weather was absolutely beautiful. We had a great bluegrass stakes race. So it, it was awesome. Not only being there with the guys, but seeing great racing. But, you know, it's always great at Keeneland. You know, I grew up at Lexington. Uh, Keeneland's where I cut my teeth in, in this game and uh, love the track, love being there. Uh, don't live in the Lexington area. I'm up in the Louisville area as far as where I live. But during the meet, I try to get there every weekend. I plan on being back on track this weekend. I was just going to ask you that. Oh, cool. So I think you said something about Sunday, right? You're going to get back to the track here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've got something going on Saturday, so I can't get down there. So I definitely want to make sure that I can get out there this weekend. So I'll probably make a trip down, drive down Sunday, watch the races all day, and just drive back same day. It's it's a little over an hour for me. Not a big deal. Super jealous of that. And uh, you could really you know, max out a, a day trip there. And it's it's nice. It's convenient for you. It's a beautiful uh, race course. And, and everybody I met was so friendly. So I look forward to uh, talking – three price play potentials with you and, and i know you picked out three value play horses and this is going to be for saturday april 20th at keeneland race course so look forward to uh, talking to you about these horses so let us know who you like also in the comments and yeah remember to like the button and uh, subscribe to trust the profit so appreciate everybody's support out there and let's get right to it so let's talk about these value play horses Actually, uh, I'm going to pull up some PPs here for you. And I love a horse here. Now, I'm so familiar with this horse. This is going to be uh, race five. And I guess I'll start it off. Usually I have my guests start it off, but we're going to start off with me here. Uh, race five. This is a 32K claimer for Crazy Legs Hirsch. I actually know this horse so well from Penn National and then even before at Remington. This horse has been very popular in the claims box even at Penn and uh, just though he actually won uh, four races for Bush racing stable. So let's take a look at the PPs a little further for you here. 
All right. So we got Crazy Legs Hirsch here. I'm sure you probably recognize this name now. We do have this horse was won four of those races at that lower 25K optional claiming level at Penn. This horse showed a new dimension to me, though, because a few years back, this horse actually used to be kind of like a push button horse from the back, kind of make one move. And I just thought he actually showed a new dimension at Penn where he can be a little bit closer to the pace and stalk. So I thought that new dimension could actually work out well. We saw a little bit of a speed bias, I thought, especially the first week at Keeneland. So I like how this horse kind of adapted his racing style to being more upfront. Now, I do like here that this horse actually had a uh, workout at Keeneland. So let's look at that a little further here. Now, I know that that was a slow workout, but that's uh, five furlongs. I like how the horse at least had a workout over the track. And look who's aboard. We have our friend Tyler Connor aboard here. So we got Tyler aboard. I actually like Tyler on this horse. He probably knows this horse well because Tyler really comes from the Penn circuit. And this horse has been at Penn for the last year. So he's got to at least be familiar with how this, this horse can run. And I just thought this trainer was interesting to me too. Now with this trainer, Cine Fias actually hits at 63%. You got that right. 63% right now with horses in the money. Now I know that that's only 27 starters, but this is a horse. Uh, this is actually a trainer that really doesn't run too many horses. And he's got five winners out of 27 starters. So I, I like that this was the trainer that claimed uh, this horse recently. And this trainer actually had a good third place finish on April 14th in a starter allowance race. And uh, I just thought, why not? You know, 12 to 1 morning line. I know this is the first time this horse is racing at Keeneland. So this is definitely a step up uh, in this 32K claimer. I thought it was interesting that uh, he get claimed for 25K and put this horse in for 32. So it wasn't like it's a, a give me up now. So we could actually, maybe the trainer knows that he has something here with Crazy Lakes Hirsch. And then uh, really just like it, you know, 12 to 1 morning line, good post. So no, it's early in the card, but take a look at this horse, Crazy Lakes Hirsch. And it's going to be race five in the 32K claimer Saturday at Keeneland. All right, great. So yeah, that was my price play in uh, race five. And I know you have a horse you like to talk about for the people, Tim. Uh, I, I do, but just real quickly before we move on to my first pick, I, I yeah. like your pick in this race. I, I uh, As I was looking, you said you had a horse here in, in the fifth. I thought this might be the one. Uh, our, our friend Tyler <laughs> Connor, who we got to hang out with a little bit on uh, Friday yeah. night there. And, uh, but I, I, I like the horse. And, and you know, first time going to be going this distance uh, has been popular in the claim box. Claim two for two in the last two races. So, I, I, I'm not sure that uh, the mile and an eighth is something that this horse really doesn't want. So it, it looks to me like if you look two races back, I'm going to throw that last one out first time with, right. the trainer, with that particular trainer. But the, if you look at this trainer, first time off a claim, mm -hmm. hits at about 22% for a $2.96 ROI. So I, I like your play here. I, th I think that that's probably a good value pick in here. And if you look at the speed uh, of uh, the speed uh, figures of the horses that are uh, figured to be the favorites in this race, I think this horse could be right there with them. So good call on that one. So for my yeah. first one, though, I'm, I'm going to go to the very next race. I'm going to go to the sixth. This is a, uh, a race on the turf, uh, an allowance race for $120,000, one mile on the turf. And for my value pick in here, I'm going to go to the seven horse. And I'm going to tell you a couple reasons why I like the seven here. So this horse, if you look, started out sprinting on the dirt, uh, broke, uh, basically uh, had a race here at Keeneland sprinting seven furlongs, uh, broke, uh, broke his maiden, uh, or her maiden, excuse me, at Churchill Downs and went to Ellis, got on the grass for the first time at Kentucky Downs. And we all know that's a finicky course. It's an unusual mm -hmm. course. Not everybody likes that. So that race doesn't look like much, but a lot of horses race at Kentucky Downs and don't look like much. So, uh, and, and, you know, that was another sprint. <laughs> in allowance class at six and a half furlongs. But here's the thing. Then the horse takes a little bit of a layoff, comes back and runs at a mile 
and and wins in in pretty good fashion. That was a, a good speed figure, puts up a 79. So I I like it, and I think that this horse, you know, horses seem to have a distance that they like, and I think the mile might be the distance here. But I've got a couple of other angles here. Junior is riding his butt off at Keeneland. Let me tell you, he is doing so well at Keeneland uh, going into this week. And I didn't see uh, how this changed today and how he rode today. I haven't looked at the races yet, but he had six wins out of 22 starts for a 20 wow. percent win percentage. And on top of that, he's got another five seconds and three thirds. I mean, the, the guy is is really riding well. But here's another thing, uh, Keith, and this is one of this is one of my Keeneland angles. A, a guy I really like on the Keeneland, uh, the Kentucky circuit that uh, does really well and brings in some pride hor price horses is Ian Wilkes. Yeah. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about Ian Wilkes. In his races so far at Keeneland, he's got 10 races. He's got two first and two seconds. That may not seem like a lot, but really, when you look at the fact that his two first place horses were seven to one and nine mm -hmm. to one, his two second place horses were 38 to one and almost 19 to one, he brings price horses home. And I think that this is really a good value play here. I think the horse is working well. You look at that work at Palm Meadows there back on the 27th, uh, 47 and three, uh, the one on the 15th of March, that was a, a blistering 59 and three for a five furlong mm. work. This horse is working really well. Junior's riding well. Ian brings them home at a price. I say, give me the seven American retro at a price in this race to finish underneath. And you know what? Wouldn't surprise me if the horse can finish on top. Oh, you make a lot of great points there. I mean, yeah, Junior has been riding so well. And yeah, Ian Wilkes is the trainer now. Look at this. You were right about that. So yeah, he's hitting 20% right now. And you know, I definitely take notice of that. Now, that's actually a recipe for our show here is that, you know, these long shots to get in the money to really spice up the exacta and the try. So I like it, and I like the uh, the pace scenario for American Retro too. So good right. post to work with. Uh, could be versatile type. So ten to one morning line. So I like it, Tim. So check out Tim's uh, cash play there. That's American Retro. Very cool. So we got uh, race six covered there. That we got one each right there. Now I know you actually were looking at a horse in race seven. So you could tell us about that, Tim. Sure. So I'm going to go back right back to uh, race seven and I'm going to go right back to the seven. And and uh, <laughs> this is a uh, seven furlong race on the dirt, a maiden special weight, 100,000. And the thing about this race is there are a couple of interesting points that I'm going to make. So before I even talk about my horse, I'm going to talk about the eight horse here. The eight horse is Sarir, Wesley Ward. There you go. There's the name. The man's on fire. Everybody sees the name and they bet his horses. Right now, he's a morning line favorite at three to one. Here's the thing. A lot of people don't break down the sprints the way that I break them down in Keeneland. They're sprinting under seven furlongs and then there's seven furlongs in my, in my opinion. And it's, it's mm -hmm. just a different race at Keeneland. Wesley Ward right now has four wins sprinting under seven furlongs in four races, uh, three or four races um, at, at seven furlongs. He has zero. His best finish is mm. a third. And those are on a couple of horses that were favorites. So I, I, I'm, I'm fading Wesley Ward in a seven furlong race. I did it a couple of times last weekend, and that was uh, some of those finishes that we're talking about. So everybody just sees Ward and automatically jumps on board. But Going to get money. Don't, yeah. they don't break them down by distance, and his seven furlongs are not as good as his shorter races. So what about Halston Rose? Listen. This horse has a morning line of eight to one, and that's why I chose it as a value play. But unfortunately, I'm, I'm worried, Keith, that this doesn't become a value play. Right. And, and this, is, this is a Brian Lynch trained horse. Brian's only uh, sent out seven horses so far this keen the meet, but he's got two wins out of those seven. So that's about 30 percent. And here's our here's our friend Junior Alvarado again jumping up. But I do like as well that horse comes in. He uh, ran his uh, first two races at Gulfstream. 
uh, she, excuse me, she ran her first two races at Gulfstream and then she's been working at Palm Meadows, but she does come in and get a work over the Keeneland track. You know, I always love to see a work over the local track before the horse races. And, and sure. she, she put up a good work that was uh, back on the 8th of April. She did four furlongs and 48 and one ninth of 27 for the day. So really good work. And, and if you look at the times of those last two races, I watched them and, and the times are extremely fast. And she, in that last race, she was right there. She was with the mm. speed and we're talking going 21 to the quarter and 44 to the half. They were absolutely flying and she was right there. And then they hit the stretch and she faded a little bit, but she still finished a, a decent third in that last race, third in the, in the race before that. And, and again, here's our friend junior getting back on, bo uh, on board this horse as well. I, I just love the way he's riding. I love the way he's ridden here at Keeneland in this kind of style on a stalking trip, which I think is what this horse is going to do. It won't surprise me to see Wesley Ward's horse go out for the lead here. But I right. think the horse is going to be right off of that. And, and if you look at the speed figures here of the way that, the, for example, and, and I know they're different tracks, but just look at the basic <laughs> speed just to get an idea. The the, uh, the eight horse was running in races that were a little bit slower and was that was that pace. Halston Rose was was right there on a faster pace. So that, that this just gives me a strong feeling that I think Brian Lynch might have his his third win here and and Junior his second in a row on a price play for us here to give us some value. No, I, I really I see so many great points that you make there and. Yeah, no, I was actually thinking the same thing that you said, Tim, that I could see this horse kind of getting bet down a little bit. Now, I know the, the Ward horse is going to take money, but we'll be lucky to get eight to one morning line. But like I said on previous episodes of Keats Cash Plays, if we can get at least five to one, you know, or something like along those lines, I really think that that's some great value. You know, Lynch is having a very nice meet at 29% right now. And you mentioned Alvarado. I actually met uh, Junior on the uh, the jockey path there. I just said hello to him, and he said hi. Such a nice guy, and he won the the richest race of the year this year with Senor Buscador. So, um, you know, the hot hand right there, eight to one. So, you got the Good Magic sire too. So we've obviously seen Absolutely. what Good Magic has done. You know, with the Kentucky Derby winner Mage. So, really, has made a. Uh, you know, the son of Curlin's made a big impact uh, as a sire already. So this is, I know this is a three-year-old filly, but this has got big potential there for Halston Rose. I like it. Very cool. So I really like that pick a lot. And then let's take a look. I actually have a, uh, a horse that I wanted to talk to you all about in the Ben Ali. So this is the grade three Ben Ali stakes. Got a lot of familiar names in this race. So I wanted to actually uh, talk to you about a horse that really intrigued me. Now, this is going to be one of my chalkier uh, price plays, if you will. So going to be looking actually at number one here. That's uh, Time for Trouble. So let's look at this horse here a little bit further for you. This is a horse trained by Jeff Hiles and will be written by Flavian Pratt. So let's... Uh, Talk about some basic po uh, points here for you. Now, this is the great three Ben Ali, as I was mentioning, the 300K purse, six to one morning line. So let's look at this a little further. Now, I've been looking at the weather report for Lexington on Saturday. Now, Friday looks a little rainy, right? I mean, I, I actually saw that. And then Saturday is kind of cloudy right now. If there's moisture on the track, I actually really like this horse a little bit more too. So let's talk about some of these uh, last couple races at Oaklawn. All right, so we got a race at Oaklawn here previously. And then uh, we got the Oaklawn race that was the sloppy track, the muddy track. And then we had a race at uh, Fairgrounds too that had a, a muddy track. So as I said, I, I really like this horse, uh, especially if there's moisture on the track. Now, I know that uh, Jeff Hiles is 0 for 18 in graded stakes tries. But he does pretty well in uh, in routes. He actually hits at 18%. And you get a top jockey aboard in Flavian Pratt. I also like the series of uh, five furlong workouts. So let's look at that a little further for you here. So we got a bunch of five furlong workouts. We got April 6th and then uh, April 13th. So leading up to this race here, I thought I like that as a stamina builder. And as far as this... 
This horse just raced on March 23rd, so those workouts impressed me right after the recent race. And then I was mentioning before about the Grade 3 Essex. This horse dropped back and made a middle move and still rallied for third. So I thought that was uh, at least a sign that you know, this horse dropped back, can make a move. So the one post doesn't really bother me in this race. And so this horse is also... I don't feel like he's track dependent. Now I do prefer a little moisture and uh, you know maybe a little, well, hopefully not really slop, but maybe a little moisture to help out this horse. But there's also a lot of notable names in this race. So let's take a look at the notable names for you, of course. Now we do have Smile Happy, the three horse here for Kenny McPeak. This horse, you know, really has potential. He has a lot of gate issues though at times. So this horse is a little hard for me to bet on uh, really, you know, three to one morning line. I'm just going to kind of pass on smile happy there. Now everybody knows this horse Kings barn. Now Kings barns is going to be on the lead uh, with Luis Saez, but then you also have laughing boy. Who's going to show a lot of pace here too for David Jacobson and Ray Lou Gutierrez. So I just thought that there was a lot of pace in this race. Hopefully to set it up for my kind of closing kick for the one horse here. And that's it. Uh, time for trouble. Now the setup could be good. I was saying with the hot pace, I don't think he's even dependent on that. So hopefully get a nice rail trip here. Now the rail at Keeneland is actually, I looked this up, is hitting at 19%. I was a little surprised at the, how high that was. So I know every race is different, but we got 19% for number one horses are winning. One of my chalkier plays of the day, but this is a six to one morning line. I really like time for trouble to stretch it out and, and get in the money. Hopefully with Kings Barnes in the race can actually kind of float up a little bit from six to one. So give me race nine. I'm looking at time for trouble. All right. Very good. So we got that covered here. And then good. Uh, did you have any thoughts on uh, this horse at all, Tim? Or Well, I, 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 I see everything you're saying, and I and I I like to pick the the thing about here's the thing about uh, stakes races at Keeneland is I would never be afraid to play a price horse in a stakes race at Keeneland because it it's never surprising to see a horse come in at a price. Okay, Keeneland can play very chalky sometimes. We saw that last Friday, I believe it was. It was as chalky as chalk gets. No, on Thursday, I think it was. Uh, last Thursday, there there were like I think seven of nine races was the chalk. Right. So it it gets very chalky like that. But it it's just amazing how often you can get a price and and finding value, which is what we're trying to do here. Don't don't be afraid to do that in the big races either. I I took a shot at that when I uh, put out my picks uh, for opening weekend on that Saturday. Uh, in both of the big races the, that weekend, I, I was taking a stab at price horses. So I'm never afraid to do that. So absolutely go for it. Yeah, let's go for it. And I know Kings Barn's going to be tough there, but, uh, you know, get at least look at this horse as a key, maybe in exactas and tries. So let's uh, get that one home at a six to one morning line. And I know that we actually are going to be uh, dueling. Uh, me and Tim have actually different picks in this race 10 here so tell us about your pick tim and uh we'll go over the conditions and everything too sure yeah the the last race uh the closeout race here on uh keeneland saturday card is a, a five and a half furlong race on the turf one hundred and ten thousand uh, dollar allowance race and uh, this is for fillies and mares three-year-olds and up which have never won a race other than maiden claiming our starter which have never won two races so uh, you've got some good horses in here, but uh, basically they're, they're, these are not horses that are proven time and again winners. So for the most part, unless they meet the special conditions, the majority of these have one win. A, a couple of them have more than one. And if you look down at uh, the six horse, uh, it, the horse, uh, at, because it meets the conditions, has three wins. So when mm. I looked at this race, there, there's an angle that I always like to look at. And this is another one of those Keeneland angle plays for me. In, in turf sprint races where you get full fields, uh, the, in, the middle inside post positions, three, four, and five, hit at a very high rate. 
So one of the first things that I do is when I handicap the race, I, I just look at all the horses, but then I'm looking, okay, is there anybody in those post positions that I like? I won't just take those post positions, obviously, because they do well. If the, if the horse is not there, it's not there. But when I see something kind of interesting, I'm, I'm always intrigued and I'm always looking closer. So in this particular race, I went to the five definite diva. So you've got a horse here in definite diva who uh, basically just won uh, her maiden, uh, broke her maiden last time out at Gulfstream Park. She's run three times at the five furlong distance on the turf, each time improving, getting better, which is always something I like to see uh, going from a 50 to a 63 to a 69 buyer. Obviously, she's going to have to move forward a little mm. bit from that. But I'll tell you what, I went back and I watched those last couple of races and, and I think she can definitely move forward off of those efforts. Uh, she gets IRAD up here. Uh, never a bad thing to get Irad on the horse. And Irad did ride this horse two races back. And I watched that race and she was right on the inside, just off the mm -hmm. pace. And then there were a wall of three horses in front of her when she hit the rail and Irad wanted to come up the rail and they did not open anything up. So <laughs> essentially, he just he just pulled her back and and you know just rode her out and didn't push her hard and everything. So and then she came right back from that with a really solid performance. But again, even though Paco rode her out pretty well in that race, I I think this horse has more. It's it's a well bred horse coming out of Constitution, um, and uh, this is a Stoneway Farm horse. I I yeah. just. The horse is well-bred, gets IRAD up for Kelly Breen. Uh, the horse is working extremely well. That was another thing that I noted that work on 10 April at Palm Meadows, 47 and three. Out of all the works that this horse has had, she's only had one workout that was faster than that at Palm Meadows. And that was the 47 flat that she put up on 4 mm. February, which was her last work before her last race that she won. So I like the pattern of throwing up that really fast work coming into the race. The other thing is uh, on, in these five furlong sprints on the turf, I like for a horse in those, uh, those uh, positions, three, four, and five to get out on the lead. And I think she's going to do that. And there may be some horses that try to go out for the lead and, and Irad is smart enough and knows how to ride. We all know how good the guy is. And, I, I think if somebody's out there, he's not dueling with them. He just puts this horse in a good position to win. I really think that this horse has a, a strong chance to win this race, uh, not just be a value play. And and I look inside on the inside horses, the one and two, that they're, they're probably going to be the favorite, the top two favorites. So I I I think we get pretty close to the value on this at eight to one. And I at, at I, I would say we get at least six to one on this horse because there are some other horses in here as well that I think could definitely uh, take some money. The seven Sweet Duchess is another one that's got a lower morning line odd that's going to take some money, depending on who draws in the 13. If the 13 comes in, that'll be interesting for me because Irad is listed on that horse. So one mm. thing that I will watch with this is where does he go if the 13 draws in? Does he go over there and who picks up? Good point. The ride on the five if that happens very good point tim yeah this is why i brought this guy on the show everybody yeah he brings up a lot of great points and no that was great that you uh said about the post positions there now that is very telling if i rad stays on this horse if the also eligible draws in so that's a very strong sign and as you see on the screen here i rad is you know doing so well right now it's the top jockey and now, I, I, you bring up a lot of points there. I read really could put a horse forward and not necessarily on the lead, but in a good stalking position, good five posts there. So definite diva for Stoneway Farm really had a look there for me too, I thought. Yeah, I, I read's in the money 50% so far at Keeneland this year, and, and he's doing much better than he did when he rode here last spring. Uh, so 50% in the money, I'll, ta I'll take those odds. For sure. And uh, we're actually dueling in this race. So I was looking at the uh, number 11. This is another uh, Pratt horse. All I want is you. So this horse actually had a look for me as well as a price play. Now you have the trainer, Ignacio uh, Correas, is actually uh, doing pretty well this meet. He has three out of four horses so far in the trifecta you know, at Keeneland. And as I mentioned, you get Flavian aboard. 
this trainer is uh you know short meat so far but he's doing well now this trainer here i found an angle for you is that the second off the layoff angle is 21 percent it actually says it yep says it right there in the pp so i actually found that before the pps even said it and then uh I don't really mind the outside post as much now. I know you were saying about the uh, the inside draw, but in turf sprints, if Pratt could just get this horse out clean, I really think that uh, all I want is you has a shot here. Now, hopefully, you kind of angle over and save a little bit of ground. Now, this horse, I really didn't think this horse won anything to do with the all weather at uh, Turfway last time. Just was you know totally far back on March 9th. So if you throw away that race. Now she actually got a month off and she's raced at Keeneland before. And I saw she actually debuted at Keeneland and then won at a uh, colonial. So, and she's actually really lightly raced compared to a lot of the competitors here. So sometimes I look at that if lightly raced, hopefully learning. Now we got April 4th workout kind of jumped out to me. So let's take a look at that workout here. Now I know we had the April 13th workout. The latest workout kind of looks like more of just a maintenance work, a three furlong. But this four furlong on April 4th was a nice workout for me. 47 and three, three out of 32 horses. Uh, I just thought that that had a look there. And the second off the layoff angle with the trainer, I just thought, uh, you know, this horse has raced at Keeneland before, didn't fire at Turfway last time made a middle move in previous races now i found another angle here is that this horse actually is kind of like an every other kind of horse here so uh before the turfway race made a middle move and then two races back before that was determined for the win at colonial that i mentioned so lightly race kind of taking a shot here with this 11 horse hopefully we'll uh 10 to 1 morning line i really thought this was a great betting race got a lot of uh the tote board, I think, is going to be kind of spread out with a lot of horses here. I thought it was really maybe one of the best betting races of the day. What did you think, Tim? I, I love the turf sprints at Keeneland. And the, the great thing about the full field wins is they are always good betting events. And, and there are actually three also eligibles in this race. So even right. if somebody scratches out, we're going to get a full field in this. We're going to get 12 horses. And I think it's a, a great uh, nightcap to the card. And it, it really will be a good race. Uh, there are several of these horses in there along with the your 11 there that uh, if you look at the two races that the uh, 11 ran at Keeneland, several of these horses were in there in that race, mm. uh, in those races with uh, her in that race. And the they're, they're just all coming back. So the one thing about the 11 is she, she's got some really fast works on the Keeneland track, obviously yep. the training uh, track, the synthetic track uh, before going up to Turfway and the main track since. Uh, but uh, she does show even some speed on the dirt there. I, I am a little bit concerned about the 11 post uh, about her having the right. 11 post in this race. Uh, so uh, the horse is going to have to be used pretty well to get out there if, if she's the going to stand a chance or try to get a position. But from the 11 post in a 12, uh, po uh, 12 horse race, uh, that that's something that I'm a little more concerned about. If if a horse is just not clearly the best, if, if somebody's clearly the right. best, I, I don't worry about it too much. But uh, th this looks like a, a very even race. Now, that being said, because I do see it so even, anything's possible. So I'm not saying it's a bad pick by any means. Those are just some additional <laughs> thoughts. I love it. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Just, you know, really uh, going back and forth with opinions and, and sharing those opinions and yeah this horse actually had a the dam was a turf winner so that was another thing that i found about all i want is you so yeah i know the 11 post is a slightly concerned i just thought hopefully flavoring can get her out of the gate well and get some positioning it's gonna be a great race to watch and good so we'll go over i uh, got a slide here for everybody we got all our picks here that we just discussed so good luck to everybody on uh, saturday april 20th this is at keeneland race course and as I mentioned before, I know we have the three oil preps. Uh, last week was the Lexington. Uh, did you have any thoughts on the Lexington and how that went? You think Encino is going to be going into the Derby? Uh, it, it, 
I think everything's kind of up in the air yet right now. It, it, let, let's wait and see how the next week or so plays out, who's coming in, who decides to stay in. That always gets shuffled uh, up even after the points are all said as far as when everybody determines who's going to run and where they're going to go and what they're going to do. And, and we've already had a, a couple of defections and people say their connections say that they're actually not going to run in the in the derby for sure. So let, let's see how the next week shakes out. But, you know, we've got a lot of great derby content coming up from the channel and uh, people are going to be putting out uh, a lot of videos uh, we should have in, should have in-depth looks at most most of the horses in the race if not all of the horses uh, we we've got a, a, a a pace predictor uh, scheduled to try to kind of look at the historical uh, view of the track and how the pace is kind of done and and try to look at what horses fit what profile and maybe who might be the favorites based on that so a lot of good uh, content to come so make sure that uh, that you're keeping tuned to trust the profits and uh, following along with us as we prepare for the kentucky derby in 17 days crazy how fast it came upon us and yeah tim says it all right there folks so uh, if you're not following trust the profits and subscribing i mean we got so much content coming out and and we'll have, uh, like you said, uh, horse profiles and the you know, 150th run into the Kentucky Derby. So this is a big deal. Really think it's, you know, a lot of people had comments about this three-year-old crop. I really think it's a spread out crop. I really think that there's a, a bunch of, I mean, I know you have Fierceness and Sierra Leone and those horses, but I really think it's it's pretty wide open. Uh, did you think it was kind of top heavy with a couple of those horses or you really you like some potential I, I think it's top heavy with a couple of horses that may take money but i don't think it's top heavy with favorites i, I think look no. I, it you're you're absolutely correct it may be a fairly even field but you know what that makes it a good race and it makes it even better for betting i'm all in <laughs> he's all in i'm all in and yeah thank you so much for everybody to checking out my show here keats cash plays and Remember to like and subscribe to the channel and let us know who you like on uh, April 20th at Keeneland Racecourse. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Tim, for uh, joining us. And, and where can everybody find you on social media? My pleasure. And uh, I'm on uh, X Twitter as well. You can find me <laughs> at Riders Up Tim. Appreciate you coming on. I'm at uh, Each Every Stride. My name's Keith here. So thank you so much, for everybody, for tuning in and Remember to keep cashing those tickets and keep it moving. Good luck, everybody.